in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore and through this series of programs we uh, like to shine the Community Foundation Spotlight on organizations that are uh, doing uh, good work in our community. Uh, this is going to be my last show here at PAC 14 and with me today is Erica Joseph and Erica is uh, part of our staff at Community Foundation and we're going to talk about some of the Community Foundation activities as we wrap up today. Erica, welcome. Hi. Good and you are the Program and Development Director at the Community Foundation. That's correct. What does that mean? Well, that means that I actually get the, the benefit of working with really both audiences that we primarily uh, get to work with in the community. Um, in the program uh, arena, I get to uh, help nonprofits navigate our grant programs. I get to work with them in um, bringing training and professional development. Uh, that, that meets the needs that they have. Um, the development side of the title means that I get to work with donors in the community who want to uh, give back through a wide variety of ways, whether it be through a scholarship fund or um, uh, giving back to an agency that they are passionate about um, and really help them create that not only one-time um, gift but something that's going to last forever. Great. Well, Erica, I, 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 I'm sure you're like me as you're out and about in the community and uh, you know, tell people you uh, are involved or work with the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore and invariably we get the question, what's the Community Foundation? What is that? <laughs> what is that? Uh, we also hear... How do, I, you, how do you respond to that? Uh, one of the things that I say um, uh, most frequently is that we help to promote philanthropy and you know, broadly that means that we help people give back. Um, it can be through uh, volunteer service. We have the Shore Camp Volunteer Center there that helps people get involved. Um, but we also help people give back um, through um, financial gifts. We help people support um, a wide variety of organizations in the community. Um, we do grant programs ourselves that support projects in local schools. We do um, a, a number of different things to help people who care about uh, causes in the area. We specifically work with Somerset, Wicomico, and Worcester County, so that's our target area. But we um, are, are really a connection point for uh, donors and volunteers who want to um, find a way that they can make a difference. Yeah, and, and certainly there are people out there who really want to make a good difference in their community, and, and sometimes they're not sure how to do it or how they can have the greatest impact over time. And uh, we certainly hope they'll pick up the phone and and call us. Absolutely, and, and so many people, we live, as you know, in a very giving community, and so the vast majority of people that we um, find, uh, who find their way to the Community Foundation are already doing so much good. Mm -hmm. And so we just um, help them to set that up so that they can, as you said, have the greatest impact, um, maybe do something in memory of someone who's important to them. Um, or take that organization that they've been volunteering with or, or giving an annual gift to every year and set up something that's going to last um, now and well beyond their lifetime. Yeah, something that, uh, that has always ma amazed me in doing the work that we do is, is the, the pleasure that giving and giving back brings uh, to the donor. I, I, you know, it's often it's great fun for us to help set it up but then we find that they're often the happiest person in the room. Absolutely. It's really one of the um, most wonderful uh, jobs. Uh, personally, if mm -hmm. I'm talking from a selfish perspective, it's, re it's really a lot of fun to help people do something that they get so much joy out of and that helps do so much good. Mm -hmm. Now you had a special project that you worked with this year, that, uh, the year that we j are just finishing, that I know was very successful. Um, the Women's mm -hmm. Fund. The Women's Fund. And tell um, our viewers about the Women's Fund. It's Amazing. really, it, it is, and it's really <clears throat> a tremendous story, and it's really all due to um, primarily a, a um, very uh, passionate and dedicated group of women who, um, this is something that since I joined the foundation, and, and um, probably since you did as well, people have been talking about um, a Women's Fund. This is something that's happened in a number, number of other communities that we've heard about, and uh, this year, or late last year actually, 
a handful of women got together and said, we've been talking about this for so long. You know, women are not about just talking. They want to take action. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody made the first gift and established the Women's Fund. And within six months, um, they had uh, brought uh, about 120, 125 women together, um, all contributing, and raised over $100,000. Yeah. And now have given their first grants. They did. It, it's remarkable when you in, think in of less it. than a year. <laughs> in less than a year, they put this together, and it's it's going to be perpetual. It's going to continue in the future. And they can you, can you? I'm asking you right off the top of your head, but recall some of the grants. And the purpose of the fund is to support the unmet needs of women and girls in our area. Correct. Right. Precisely. So it's sort of by women for women and girls, and um, we uh, we helped them. Um, uh, this is really donor driven, uh, but the Community Foundation this is, is a great example of the, the kind of support that we can offer. Um, we uh, helped them initiate their first grant pro uh, project, uh, get that information out in the community. They solicited proposals. Uh, they established a grant committee who reviewed all those and did site visits and met these wonderful applicants and awarded uh, $25,000 to seven different organizations throughout our region. Um, these were projects such as one um, in Worcester County to Diaconia to establish a support group for women who are transitioning out of um, the shelter. So they have been homeless, but now they're getting uh, back on their feet and this helps gives them, give them an extra safety net of, mm -hmm. of support of other women who have been in that situation. Uh, we did a grant to the Village of Hope here in Salisbury that um, helps to support uh, women and children um, who are also um, navigating and becoming self-sufficient um, and providing some support for them. We did um, grants to also Easter Seals and to 4-H um, programs and to um, trying to think of some of the and those other. Those were there for summer, summer camp programs for girls who otherwise might not have that enrichment opportunity. Absolutely and so it's really been a nice uh, opportunity to target um, through the actions of those donors who supported the Women's Fund um, some unique projects that um, maybe wouldn't be touched elsewhere through the Community Foundation and let them really motivate and, and, and drive some resources to projects. If we have a viewer out there who's watching who hasn't heard about the Women's Fund, how can they find out more information? How, the, how can they become a, a founder? Well, the, the primary way so far has been through word of mouth from the women. So we're here to help, you know, to spread that a little farther. Uh, we have information on our website, and there's a link right on the homepage, and that's at cfes.org. Uh, they can go there. There's a, a nice uh, overview of the fund and, and, and also a, a, a listing of all of the women who have become founders. Basically, being a founder means that they have uh, a visionary founder um, makes a a gift of a thousand dollars to the fund, mm -hmm. um, but we also are inviting women um, to uh, make pledges or one-time gifts. So uh, we are uh, trying to engage as many women from across the area as possible, and um, in the amount that they are most comfortable in giving. So, yeah, so if somebody doesn't have a thousand dollars, there's uh, certainly other ways they can get involved. Absolutely, and uh, might be some men watching that might want to uh, to sign up their wife. We had, uh, it was interesting, uh, the, uh, a few of the first gifts that we received to the Women's Fund uh, were from men who were doing uh, gifts in honor of their wives or of their mothers, and some even did last year, I recall, a couple of uh, Christmas gifts that people did for their wives. I, I made it a birthday present. Mm -hmm. And my wife has been delighted with that, uh, you know. It's, and it's great because it's not only that um, financial contribution to be part of um, something that's uh, a larger than, than simply your gift, but it's also a way to get engaged. We have committees and, and they're doing uh, work and networking with each other uh, beyond just the simple building of the fund. Mm -hmm. Sure. And if somebody wants to, they could call you at the Community Foundation, so let's give them the phone number. The Community Foundation is 410-742-9911, and of course, call and ask for me, but any of our staff is more than happy to help. Absolutely. Great. Now, 
The other part of the, the, the giving season that we've been very active with, uh, we're just kind of wrapping up, is scholarships. Uh, you know, that's, that's been keeping folks very, keeping us very busy recently. It's a huge part of the work that we do at the Community Foundation, especially this time of the year mm -hmm. and, and, and the spring season. Um, we had, um, I think, over 100 scholarship funds at the Community Foundation now, and we are distributing to um, literally hundreds and hundreds of students throughout our area who are going to higher education mm -hmm. opportunities um, to schools all over the country. And it's been a really nice way that um, local individuals have been able to support education and to uh, get students from the Lower Eastern Shore um, you know, the, the additional experience and knowledge that they need for their future. Mm -hmm. And it could be an individual or family wants to establish a scholarship fund. Uh, it could be a community group, a service club. We've had um, businesses establish mm -hmm. scholarship funds, um, and it, it can be a, a way to honor either a specific type of, of work. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you want to support nurses, and you want to help students get um, educated to become nurses and help with uh, future health care needs or it can be for a specific college or high school maybe the one that you went to and you want to help students have that same mm -hmm. experience that you did and so we have um, lots of flexibility and and have had donors that have done really unique and wonderful things mm -hmm. for kids in the area it's a great way to uh, uh, honor uh, or memorialize a member of the family, what have you. We have some uh, some graduating classes that have uh, their reunions started scholarship funds, and I know every summer there you know there are folks who might be watching who go to their class reunions, and it's a great way for them to uh, to support students who are now graduating. It is. It's really wonderful, and it's it's a um, it's one of those examples where people feel really good. You know, mm -hmm. they know that they're helping. They know that they're helping kids, and that's that's wonderful. Yeah, I know. I, I guess it was the week before last. I, in one sitting, signed over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in scholarship fund checks to go to various colleges and universities, and that's really just starting. We'll do uh, close to a quarter million dollars in scholarships this year. And one of the one of the highlights, I know, um, BJ in our office, who who gets most of the communication and, and really um, leads that whole scholarship program. Um, one of the highlights is when she starts to get the thank you notes in mm -hmm. from the students. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not a lost art. There are so many kids that are um, still doing those handwritten mm -hmm. notes and telling you and the donors, because um, that's, that's our objective. The scholarship funds, they're coming through us, mm -hmm. um, but they're really done on behalf of those donors that have set up the funds. And it just is really amazing to see how much of a difference, even, even a modest scholarship, mm -hmm. even $500, what that can do for a student who's who's working to you know gather the resources that they need. In some cases, it makes a difference between whether they're going to go to college or not. And I, I, I've been amazed uh, when I've seen the statistics on the amount of debt that uh, young people have when they graduate from college now. And and it, you know if they can cut into that up front with scholarships, every five hundred, every thousand dollars they get up front is less debt they have at the other end, which uh, really helps them in the long run. And we have great um, experience and partnerships in place with the local colleges and mm -hmm. universities, Warwick and Salisbury University and UMES. They've all been um, wonderful to work with to really help to um, help students not only get the, the scholarships we're awarding, but really figure out how to help these students do exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, find um, the best resources out there for their education. And the Community Foundation has partnered with the Delmarva Education Foundation to try to make get that information out to the community. That, that's one of the most interesting um, challenges that students have is that finding all the opportunities that there are to apply for scholarships. And Delmarva Education Foundation has been doing a lot of work through their website to get that all in one place mm -hmm. and I know is very diligent and so um, it's a great resource and, and working with them has been um, very helpful in helping more students learn about the scholarships we hold. Sure. Well, I know they, they last uh, winter they had a scholarship fair at the center in Salisbury which was a phenomenal success. It was. I, I think they had a number of representatives of scholarship organizations including us. and. Uh, I, I was there for a while, and just I think the the turnout of uh, parents and and young people 
uh, was far, you know, far more than any of us imagined. And it showed you the demand and, and the it need really that's did. really out there. So, so if somebody's watching, they might be interested in trying to start a scholarship fund. Again, how do they do it? They can, they can call uh, myself or B.J. Summers at the Community Foundation. I must say that um, we try really hard at the Community Foundation to be user-friendly, <laughs> and it's um, a kind of amazing, I think, for a number of, of um, donors that come to us. I think they would say that they're surprised at how easy it is to set some of those things up. It's not complicated. Um, if there are things that need to be researched or looked into, that's what we're there for. Mm -hmm. And we try to really make it um, as, as simple and straightforward and, and fun as possible. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and we, try, we try to do the work and, and uh, they get the uh, satisfaction of knowing they're helping a young person in, in the case of a scholarship. So, great. Um, a lot of other grant programs. Now you have one grant program that has a deadline coming up. We do. We have a couple of deadlines um, later this summer that um, uh, people should be aware of. Uh, the Community Needs Grant Program is, is coming up really quickly um, at the beginning of August, uh, August 1st, and that is for community uh, organizations, nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. for program support across the charitable spectrum. Actually, by the time this airs, they might have missed they that They might one. have missed <laughs> it. The good news is, is that if that is the case, we run these deadlines on a regular cycle, and so we'll have another one early in um, the next year. And so they if they've missed this one? There's always there's another, another one, one coming up, so uh, don't worry about that. And then we have our education grants program that the deadline is at the end of the summer. Uh, I think it's August 24th. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is if, is if these deadlines are passed when you're seeing this, don't be concerned. We have opportunities for application um, on an ongoing basis as well. So the key mm -hmm. is if you have a need, um, contact us or visit the website and, and that can give you information on opportunities for support. Now, you have a small grants program now and that's a rolling deadline. You can take applications right. to that anytime. Then explain how that works. Well, this was the outcome of um, our board actually wanting to be um, recognizing that we had deadlines and that sometimes people miss those deadlines and what does that mean? Um, you know, we want to be flexible and responsive and so the board said, you know, we have these other ways that we can help support nonprofits. So um, let's develop this really simple process and it's our small grants program. Uh, organizations can uh, write a letter and there's information on our website that tells them how to do that, what we need. Um, submit that letter of inquiry to uh, the staff at the Community Foundation and we um, get back to them uh, within a week or so and let them know if there's an opportunity to apply uh, through the small grants program and usually we can have feedback on that proposal uh, within 30 to 45 days which um, if you ever have done grant writing <laughs> of your own you know that sometimes it's the wait after you've submitted that can be yeah. the longest and so we try to move that along. Yeah, try to be user friendly. That's great. So, uh, you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell, the President of Community Foundation Eastern Shore. My guest today is Erica Joseph and uh, we're talking about Community Foundation programs uh, that uh, support the nonprofit community here across the Lower Shore. Uh, Erica is our Program and Development uh, Director at the Community Foundation. Uh, another aspect of your job, Erica, is running the education programs that the Community Foundation provides for the nonprofit uh, community. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about how they work. Well, for those that have visited our offices, um, they would know that we have a, a really wonderful facility that's available not only for the community foundation, but also for other organizations in the community to, to use. We have meeting space, and we, from time to time, will host uh, professional development sessions there uh, on a variety of topics. For example, in the coming months, we anticipate having something um, related to the foundation directory. We have that resource um, at our facility as well and that's a, a research tool for organizations to seek grants outside of the community foundation. Um, we anticipate having some topics related to marketing and financial management for nonprofits and this is really there are opportunities you know in other parts of the region mm -hmm. but sometimes the travel and expense of that can be a little costly and so we sort of 
try to bring that home and, and make it available on a, uh, a more affordable budget. Try to keep them pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. And you even throw in lunch on occasion, I think, we don't you? We <laughs> feed them and they will come. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, and uh, you're just finishing up a, a training program for volunteer development, aren't you? Leadership Academy. This is this is brand new. It's, it's the first year of a program that we anticipate we'll be doing on a regular basis. It's our Volunteer Leadership Academy. And it is um, tied in with some service activities that the Volunteer Center will be targeting in October around Make a Difference Day. And this is an opportunity. We've got um, uh, a dozen or so really wonderful and engaged volunteer leaders who came wanting to do projects in their community around that uh, service day. And so we've been working with them to help develop those projects, to give them the tools that they need to recruit volunteers and, and implement their projects and are even helping with some of the initial funding through a special grant program just for that. Mm -hmm. And um, they will be, will be promoting those over the coming months so that people can get involved with them. They're around the region, so there'll be something close to everybody. And um, I think it's a really wonderful way to sort of um, spread the work of and help promote the work that people are doing um, in little communities throughout the Lower Eastern Shore. So an opportunity for somebody who's interested in volunteering, come in, get trained on how to organize and run a project, then they can go out and recruit some volunteers to, to help them, and Community Foundation gives them some money to fund it. Sounds like a win, win, win. And we've had a number of calls from people who have heard about it since it started and have wanted to get in, you know, on the program, but uh, unfortunately it's sort of all-encompassing, so it's mm -hmm. sort of a start-to-finish process. But we will have it available, and uh, early next spring we will be um, recruiting new mm -hmm. participants. And so we just encourage people to um, get involved this year in projects if they can, and then think about those things they'd like to do mm -hmm. for next year, and we'll have an opportunity to support those. Now, if somebody is just interesting in, interested in volunteering, maybe they're new to the community or what have you, uh, how can the uh, Shore Can Volunteer Center help them? We have an online database that is uh, searchable by a variety of factors. You can put in your zip code, you can put in your area of interest, um, and it's um, there's a link off of our website, our cfes.org, or you can just visit SHORCAN, which is S-H-O-R-E-C-A-N.org, mm -hmm. and that has that link to that website, and it's got over a hundred different nonprofits who are currently posting local opportunities right there. Um, you can get involved in a one-day event, you can get involved, you know, one of the things that I think many volunteers don't consider is that whatever your professional expertise, whatever you've kind of done for a living, if you're interested in doing that um, for an or a nonprofit organization, they have all of the same types of business needs that a, that a for-profit business has. They need marketing, they need technology. Um, for, for nonprofits, there's always grant writing. Uh, so, you know, there's a way to give back um, sort of that professional component as well. And the key is if they don't find what they're looking for on that website, if they call us at the foundation, we probably know of an organization that does or could use whatever it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. So just an opportunity to get involved. And, and see, it, it always intrigues me the other, I, I talk to volunteers who tell me that they feel as if they're getting more back than they're giving. They, they get uh, uh, new social uh, contacts, new friends, uh, certainly a feeling of satisfaction. Uh, sometimes they learn new skills, learn skills they didn't know they uh, d hadn't developed before. We've seen the, the range of people that we've seen become involved in the Volunteer Center is so broad. We've seen people who either want to switch careers or who are looking for new jobs and they'll use it as an opportunity to build their resume. Mm -hmm. We've had families get involved together where um, you know they can do a one-day event. Maybe the, the parents get involved with the organization, but then on certain events they can bring their kids out. And so you see that bonding that's going on when they're sort of sharing in that experience. Um, it, it's just really amazing the, the, the people we get to meet just because we're out doing volunteer work with mm -hmm. them. It is, and, and it, it is. I th think you make an interesting point there that that uh, certainly the uh, the community foundation staff uh, walks or talk because uh, I know y you and the other staff have been out volunteering yourselves on uh, on occasion. And we do so you experience these things firsthand. 
Yeah, and get to re meet amazing people that um, you just might not get to meet in your regular walk through life. So, somebody wants to meet some of these amazing people. Talk as we wrap up here about some of the ways that people can get involved with the community foundation. It's so broad that it really is just a matter of, of initially doing that initial communication. Um, visit our website, um, give us a call, uh, come to one of our events. Um, we try to do stop things. By the office. Stop by the office. <laughs> we have, um, you know, our office is, is um, very accessible right off of Route 50. Our address is on the website. Um, just make that contact, and, and we're happy to tell you about all the things that we have going on and all the ways that they can get involved in the community um, in a broader sense. So, um, you know, making that first, first, first call or first email or first visit is really the best way. Mm -hmm. It is. And if somebody's interested in, a, in uh, you know, having a, a more significant impact with their philanthropy, you can help with that? We can. We, um, you know, the, the goal for that is always to uh, talk with, with that person and find out what it is they're trying to do. And then we can figure out what tools, what programs, what opportunities we have to really make that uh, reality uh, through a partnership with the Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that you make a you use a very important word there, partnership, because whether it's with a donor, whether it's with a nonprofit organization, that's what the community foundation really tries to do is build a partnership of of adding value to that relationship. And and in that respect, uh, the community foundation has become a very powerful philanthropic engine for the area. Yeah, it's 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 uh, amazing what the contributors to the community foundation in its history have created um, and it allows us to distribute um, a tremendous amount of funds every year close to four and a half million dollars and it is just a remarkable success story for this community and it shows what was sort of getting together and and um, trying to make a permanent difference in the community um, what this community foundation has been able to accomplish. The power of people working together. Yeah. Well, Eric, I'm really glad to have you here with me today. Thanks. Uh, as you know, this is going to be my last show uh, as the president of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. It's been a, a great pleasure for me to, to, to bring these shows to over PAC-14 and work with our friends here at PAC-14 to help uh, the, our community learn more about the, uh, the nonprofit community and the work that they do here across the Lower Shore. And uh, it's been great working with you. and. Uh, I'm you certainly well. going to wish everyone at the Community Foundation uh, uh, the best. Uh, the Community Foundation is coming up on 29 years of being of serving the Lower Shore. Uh, it was a vision of some folks uh, back in the early 1980s. Uh, if they, they brought the right resources and right people together, they could impact uh, the lives of the community and, and improve the quality of life here. And, uh, over the years, uh, th this just past year, uh, Community Foundation has distrib distributed almost four and a half million dollars to local nonprofit organizations, has, has connected hundreds of volunteers to organizations, has trained the nonprofit staff, and, and really helped build uh, the, the services to our community. And uh, it's been my personal pleasure to be able to bring part of that here to you through PAC-14. And uh, we, fought, we really thank you for being loyal viewers uh, to Community Foundation uh, Spotlight. We urge you to continue to support the Community Foundation, support PAC-14. And uh, until I'm ha I have an opportunity to be here with you again, I wish you all the best. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC-14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.